Greetings my friends. Welcome to another recreation of a real railway made using Transport Fever 2. Today we're on the present day Metropolitan Line, part of the London Transport Network and we'll be travelling from the terminus at Watford to Harrow on the Hill. But for a change we begin inside the carriage and we're on the way to Watford. When we arrive we will go up the platform and enter the driver's cab. The Metropolitan Railway, as it was then, built the branch line to Watford in 1925, taking a spur off the main line south of Rickmansworth, building two new stations, Croxley and Watford. They had intended to go into the centre of the town to link up with the main line service operated by the London Midland Scottish Railway. But the LMS also ran local trains from Rickmansworth and from Croxley Green to Watford and was not keen on a competitor and the Met had to settle for a greenfield site nearly a mile from the centre. However, as the LMS stations were called Watford Junction and Watford High Street, the Met could, rather cheekily, call its new station Watford. Of course, a suburb grew up around Watford Station, uh, almost entirely composed of 1930s semi-detached houses, but there's also a lot of new flats being built. You can see some of them to the right on the site of what was the goods yard of Watford Station. Really nice to have a completely empty carriage for a change. Right, we will alight here. And we should just have time to get to the driver's cab before the train starts the return journey. Center it properly. So I always hit the wrong button to change the camera position. Right, we're now properly in the driver's cab and do we have a driver? Yes, we do. Off we go. The dream of, of a direct connection to the heart of Watford never died. In 2010, there was official approval for a plan to use the disused track bed of the Croxley Green to Watford Railway, which was last used in 1996 and which runs from close to Croxley Station towards Watford High Street Station. Two new stations were to be built and Watford Station would be closed, as it would no longer be required. But the capital cost of the project was too high and the plan was shelved four years ago, although recently uh, fresh ideas have been put forward, so maybe we will see the extension one day. And we are just crossing here the River Gade, uh, to our right Cassiabri uh, Farm, uh, sort of animal heritage, uh, not heritage, animal protection centre. And we're crossing here the Grand Union Canal. I'm going to stop the train here. because this is um, a well-known site for people to take photographs and we'll leave the cab and you can see here this is the Bridgewater Basin Marina and the main road into Watford from Rickmansworth crosses by that bridge and if we turn around we can see 
the bridge that the, uh, the Metropolitan Railway had to build. This is quite a difficult uh, feat of engineering because of course the ground here between the canal and the river was very soft. They had to put some very deep piles in. We will get back into the cab. Uh, let's carry on. To our right, as you look back there, that is a brand new school called Croxley Danes. It is so new that there is uh, very little information about it that I can see on either Google Street View or on the aerial shots. It seems to be a building site, so I wasn't able to model it properly. And now we're entering the suburb of Croxley, or really Croxley Green. Croxley Green was the original village. And the first station here was called Croxley Green. When the Met came here, they called their station Croxley. It's a typical uh, Metropolitan Line station with the booking office and uh, station buildings built over the railway on a bridge and that's something that's particularly difficult to model in Transport Fever 2. We're in a cutting here, so I've raised the camera a little bit. Metropolitan Line joins the main line in two places, and there's a sort of triangular, triangular connection. There's the north curve which we're not going to take, that leads towards Rickmansworth and on to uh, Amersham. This is the south curve which takes us south eastwards towards London. The locals were very concerned when the railway was built about the preservation of the woods to our right, which are entirely enclosed by this triangle of railway, um, but as far as I can tell they have been well looked after. Now we're joining the main railway and once again we cross the Grand Union Canal, a few people out there for a walk and some narrow boats, and we cross the River Gade. And to our left the Tolpits Lane Industrial Estate and to our right is the Valley of the River Col, which uh, runs on down towards the River Thames south of Uxbridge. And here we are coming up to the uh, River Col. Grounds to our right and to our left are those of Merchant Taylor's School. And this is the beginning of Moor Park, a private estate to the right, which I haven't modelled because it's not on Google Street View. And to our left, although you can't see it, is Sandy Lodge Golf Club. And the original name of this station was Sandy Lodge, but it, then it was called Sandy Lodge and Moor Park, and now it's just called Moor Park. Passengers wishing to travel to uh, Rickmansworth and any points further north need to change here.
The next station is Northwood. Uh, the Met extended its line from Harrow to Northwood in 1887. Much of the land in the area was part of the Eastbury estate, but just before the railway came, it was bought by uh, an enterprising chap who subsequently laid out a network of residential streets that were centred on the new station. And these uh, are called Murray Road, Maxwell Road, Hallowell Road, Carew Road, Edith Road, Chester Road, Roy Road and Reginald Road. Well, the guy's name was Frank Murray Maxwell Hallowell Carew. His, name was, his wife's name was Edith Chester and Roy and Reginald were his sons. And the only name that's changed is Edith Road, which today is called Dean Road. Another example of a station with uh, shops built on the bridge that goes over the station, which is not an easy thing to model accurately. To our left, the now disused, as far as I can tell, northward sidings. And to our right, the open spaces around Haste Hill, uh, the ancient Raslip Woods, a couple of golf courses, the Raslip Lido, which is just beyond the line of the woods, and you can see the uh, sports ground there where Northwood Football Club play. I explained in my last video that I knew Northwood Hills Station uh, extremely well because I went to school in Northwood Hills and as we come up to the end of the platform uh, you'll see the spot more or less where that uh, the last person is standing here is where I used to stand uh, every afternoon for about six years uh, on my way home. There's a great many bungalows in the streets around here. One of the models that we don't really have very much of is UK style bungalows. And I've had to use a sort of continental little house as a surrogate. I'm just being overtaken by a fast train. Met, of course, the only line on London transport system that has express trains. And taking one of those trains, you save about five minutes off the journey.
now coming into Pinna, and unlike uh, Northwood and Northwood Hills, Pinna is an ancient village. Uh, in fact, its name, I am told, suggests that its origins lie before 900 AD. And on the left is the Church of St John the Baptist, which was built in the 14th century. At the top of um, a little hill, which is lined with medieval and 18th century buildings. And it's got a brand new lift, which I've attempted to model. And unfortunately, the view into the village is dominated by Sainsbury's, um, Sainsbury's car park in particular is what we're looking at here, built on the site, of course, of the old goods yard. It's worth reminding ourselves that every metropolitan line or station, or sorry, every metropolitan runway station, I should say, uh, came with a goods yard, um, especially for the distribution of coal. And most of them closed in the 1960s. Metropolitan Railway, before it became part of London Transport, was as much about the movement of goods as it was people. But as soon as it came into the London uh, Passenger Transport Board, which then became London Transport, the focus shifted entirely on shifting people. This is North Harrow, and straight down the line we have the characteristic outline of Harrow Hill, and you should just about be able to make out the spire of St Mary's Church. We'll just go up a little bit here and look down the street here. This is Imperial Drive, third turning on the left, it's a street called Elm Drive, and I lived in Elm Drive for several years. Over to our right, the Uxbridge branch, and you can just see uh, West Harrow Station, the other side of the allotments. There it is. Now we're arriving at Harrow on the Hill Station, now dominated by several very tall blocks of flats that were only built in the last few years, uh, replacing a derelict post office uh, sorting office. And it amuses me to think of people who were living on the uh, top floors of those flats, getting up every day and looking out over the platforms of Harrow on the Hill. This is where our journey ends. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave me a like or a friendly comment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep in touch with any future developments. Thank you very much.